So vitamin B2 and CoQ10, should you bother to take them for your headaches and migraines or not? I mean, there's so many supplements in the world. How's the girl supposed to decide, right? Well, I'm going to say that you absolutely should be on B2 and CoQ10. And here's why. So both of these nutrients are important parts of making energy. All right. They are important for the biochemical reactions that happen inside your cells in these little bitty power generators called mitochondria. And since the brain takes up about a fifth of your energy overall, it makes sense that if your mitochondria don't have everything they need to do their job, then the brain might suffer as a result of that, right? And one of the ways the brain can suffer is to try to talk to you through pain. Like, hello, I'm going to produce pain. Maybe you will pay attention to me. So here's what we know from the scientific data. Okay, first study, coenzyme Q10 supplementation for prophylaxis in adult patients with migraine a meta-analysis. Now, I love a good meta-analysis. It's like they do all the work for you. They look up all the old studies on this topic, put it all together, think about it, and make a recommendation. It's the best thing ever. All right. So for this particular study, I'll draw your attention down here to where it says results. So they look at six different studies with a total of 371 participants, and they concluded that there was no statistically significant reduction in severity of migraine attack with CoQ10, but CoQ10 supplementation reduced the duration of headache attacks, and it also reduced the frequency of migraine headache compared to control. So, I mean, that's all right. You kind of take CoQ10 as a preventive anyway. What you want is a reduction in the frequency of your migraines, right? That's why you're taking a preventive every day. So yay, CoQ10 is in, okay, good. Our next study is effect of vitamin B2 supplementation on migraine prophylaxis, a systematic review and meta-analysis. This one was also published during COVID. I think everybody was a little bored during COVID and they just went around and looked at all the old studies to see what they could come up with. <laughs> That's my theory. Anyway, all right, I will draw your attention to the results section here. They looked at nine articles that were included in this systemic review and meta-analysis. And check out these conclusions here. They showed that vitamin B2 supplementation significantly decreased migraine days, duration, frequency, and pain. Wow, so that kind of helped for everything. Now, what's interesting about these two studies is the doses that they chose. So this dose of riboflavin goes back to a 1998 randomized controlled trial where they originally chose the dose of 400 milligrams. Now, I do not know why they chose 400 milligrams. If anybody who's watching this video knows why that was chosen, please comment and let me know. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's like 400 times greater than the US RDA for riboflavin, which is about you know 1.3, 1.5, something like that. It's super low. So I don't know why they picked these mega doses of B2, but anyway, it appears to do a really good job at helping the mitochondria among other things in the body. So to summarize, um, yes, on CoQ10, the dose that has been studied is 100, is 100 milligrams three times a day. Now, I know that that middle of the day dose of anything, supplement, prescription, whatever, is super hard to take. So if you do it twice a day, if you split up that 300, so you're taking 150 in the morning and 150 at night, I think that's totally fine. Um, and then 400 milligrams of riboflavin. Again, you can cut that up into twice a day, 200 in the morning, 200 at night. And then you've got this mitochondrial aspect of migraine uh, predisposition kind of handled, right? Now, back to the problem of how many supplements am I going to take a day for my migraines, right? Okay, so here's how I solve this problem. Now, this is just me. You can make a, a different conclusion if you want, but these doses that they've chosen are kind of random, right? So I think that as long as you're getting some every day, that's probably good enough to cover this particular aspect of migraine predisposition. So most 
uh, multivitamins will have a little bit of vitamin B2 or riboflavin in them. The B vitamins are usually pretty well covered. CoQ10, not as much. You're going to have to look for a multi that's got that. It can also be pricey. So it is definitely going to bump up the cost of your multi. But if it makes it so you can take one multivitamin a day, which by the way, you should do anyway, because if you're trying to improve a biochemical pathway that has 10 steps and you've now taken B2 and CoQ10, there's still the other eight, right? So no harm in taking a multi. And if you want to take a multi that's got vitamin B2 or riboflavin and also CoQ10 in it, then I think that makes sense, especially if it makes it so you take at least some, right? So you may not want to take three whole separate supplements, your multi, the B2 and the CoQ10, but if you wrap them all up into one, boom, so easy to do. So that is an easy way to solve that problem. Make sure that you're getting some of that riboflavin and CoQ10, knowing that our doses are eh, maybe a little off anyway, who knows, but that there is good benefit that they help migraines in general, probably by helping your cells make more energy. All right, hope that helps.